Mars, the mysterious red planet, has long intrigued us. Today, we delve into the audacious concept of terraforming Mars to create a second Earth. We'll take a deep dive into the science, the strategies, and the staggering possibilities that this idea presents. From understanding the Martian landscape to exploring the potential of life-sustaining ecosystems, we'll venture into the realm of transforming the inhospitable into the habitable. Join us on this fascinating journey as we explore the possibilities of transforming the Red Planet. Before we can consider terraforming, we must first understand Mars in its current state. Mars, the fourth planet from the Sun, is often referred to as the Red Planet due to its rusty surface. Its day, or Sol, is just slightly longer than Earth's, and it has polar ice caps made of water and carbon dioxide, much like our own. But that's where most of the similarities end. Mars's atmosphere is thin and predominantly composed of carbon dioxide, with only trace amounts of oxygen. This thin atmosphere allows for extreme temperature fluctuations, and it doesn't provide adequate protection from harmful solar radiation. Additionally, while Mars has water, it's mostly in the form of ice, and the low atmospheric pressure keeps it from existing as a liquid on the surface. In terms of size, Mars is only about half the diameter of Earth, and its gravity is just over a third of ours. These differences present significant challenges when we consider the prospect of transforming Mars into a second Earth. Armed with this understanding, we can now delve into the concept of terraforming. The idea of terraforming, transforming an alien planet to support human life, is as complex as it is exciting. We're not just talking about making Mars habitable, we're talking about making it thrive just like Earth. But how do we go about turning a desolate, cold and barren world into a lush, warm and livable one? The answer lies in two fundamental aspects, atmospheric pressure and surface temperature. Atmospheric pressure on Mars is less than 1% of Earth's. To make Mars more Earth-like, we'd need to significantly increase this pressure. This would not only allow humans to walk on the Martian surface without a pressure suit, but also help liquid water to persist on the surface, a crucial element for life as we know it. Next, we need to raise the surface temperature. Mars is much colder than Earth, with an average temperature around minus 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Increasing the temperature would make the planet more hospitable and could help unlock water from the frozen polar ice caps. It's a gargantuan task, a transformation of cosmic proportions. But the question remains, how do we bring about these changes? The answer lies in greenhouse gases, but more on that in the next scene. Greenhouse gases, often vilified on Earth, could be key to warming Mars. These gases, particularly carbon dioxide, work like a blanket around a planet. They trap heat from sunlight and prevent it from escaping back into space. This greenhouse effect contributes to global warming here on Earth. But on the frigid, barren landscape of Mars, a little global warming could be just what the doctor ordered. Carbon dioxide is especially interesting because Mars already has a lot of it. It makes up about 95% of the Martian atmosphere. By increasing the concentration of this gas, we could theoretically raise the average temperature of the red planet. But it's not as simple as it sounds. You see, to achieve a significant greenhouse effect on Mars, we would need to introduce a vast amount of additional carbon dioxide. And even then, there are challenges. Mars has a much thinner atmosphere than Earth, so the warming effect might not be as strong. Plus, there's the question of where all this extra gas would come from. So while greenhouse gases could certainly play a part in terraforming Mars, they're not a magic bullet. Greenhouse gases alone won't suffice. We also need to create an atmosphere. Creating an atmosphere on Mars is no small feat. To transform the barren, cold and radiation-blasted surface into a habitable environment, we need to thicken the air around the planet. One of the key methods to achieve this is by releasing carbon dioxide, or CO2, from Martian sources. Now you may wonder, where's this CO2 coming from? Well, Mars has vast reserves of CO2 locked in its polar ice caps and soil. By heating these reserves, we can release CO2 into the Martian atmosphere. And here's the neat part. As more CO2 is released, it helps to trap solar heat causing a greenhouse effect that further warms the planet. This, in turn, releases even more CO2, a positive feedback loop that could help kickstart the process of terraforming. But it's not just about warming Mars. 
A thicker atmosphere would provide another crucial benefit, protection. Just as Earth's atmosphere shields us from harmful solar radiation, a Martian atmosphere could do the same for future inhabitants. This is a monumental task, fraught with challenges and unknowns. But if successful, it could pave the way for transforming the Red Planet into a more Earth-like world. With an atmosphere in place, the next step is water. E water is essential for life as we know it. But how do we bring water to Mars? Mars is not entirely devoid of water. The Martian North and South Poles are home to vast deposits of water ice. The challenge lies in unlocking and utilizing this precious resource. One strategy scientists are exploring is heating the planet enough to melt these polar ice caps. This could be achieved through a variety of methods, including the deployment of large mirrors in space that would reflect sunlight onto the poles, gradually raising their temperature. This is not as far-fetched as it may sound. We've already seen the power of concentrated sunlight in solar furnaces here on Earth. Apply that same principle on a grander scale, and we might just be able to tap into Mars' frozen reservoirs. But it's not just about having water, it's about having liquid water, which requires an atmosphere thick enough to prevent it from immediately evaporating or freezing. This is where the creation of a Martian atmosphere, which we discussed earlier, comes into play. Melting Mars' polar ice caps would not only provide water, but also release additional carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, enhancing the greenhouse effect and further warming the planet. Water and atmosphere are crucial, but life also needs a helping hand. Could life itself help us terraform Mars? It's a question that brings us to the fascinating realm of biology. With the harsh conditions on Mars, the answer could lie in the most resilient life forms on Earth, extremophiles. These hardy organisms thrive where most life can't, enduring extreme heat, cold, radiation, and more. Scientists wonder if these extremophiles could help us transform Mars. By introducing them to the Martian landscape, we could potentially kickstart a biological revolution. Over time, these organisms could alter the Martian environment, making it more hospitable to other life forms. But why stop at what already exists? Enter the world of genetic engineering, Imagine tweaking the DNA of organisms to withstand Mars' harsh conditions, even flourish there. Genetically modified organisms could produce oxygen, break down rocks into soil, or even create a protective ozone layer. This biological approach to terraforming Mars is fascinating, offering a blend of biology and space exploration. We're essentially talking about creating a new ecosystem on a different planet, an ecosystem that could support plant, animal, and perhaps human life. Yet this audacious plan is not without its share of challenges. Terraforming Mars is fraught with immense challenges and potential risks. This is not an endeavor to be taken lightly. The ethical considerations alone are vast. Are we right to alter another planet to suit our needs? What if there's life, however microscopic, that we disrupt or even destroy in the process? Then there's the environmental impact. The process of terraforming would involve massive changes to the Martian landscape and atmosphere. We'd be releasing greenhouse gases, melting ice caps, and potentially introducing new organisms. The consequences of these actions are largely unknown and could potentially lead to unforeseen problems. And let's not forget about the question of long-term sustainability. Even if we could make Mars habitable for humans, could we keep it that way? Maintaining a stable environment on a planet that's naturally hostile to life as we know it would be an enormous ongoing challenge. It would require constant monitoring and likely continuous intervention. Moreover, there's the risk of failure. The stakes are high in this high-cost, high-risk venture. A failed terraforming attempt could mean the loss of vast amounts of resources and potentially even lives. Despite these challenges, the dream of colonizing Mars persists. The allure of the red planet is undeniable, and for many, the potential rewards far outweigh the risks. The prospect of transforming Mars is intrinsically linked to the future of space colonization. This audacious dream of making the red planet habitable is not just about scientific curiosity or technological prowess. It's about ensuring the survival and prosperity of humanity in the cosmos. Imagine a second home a haven where humans can thrive just as they do on Earth. Now, such a concept may seem far-fetched today, but the wheels are already in motion. The groundwork is being laid, and the blueprints are being drawn. 
Mars, with its vast landscapes and untapped resources, presents an opportunity for a fresh start, a chance to learn from our past and build a sustainable future in harmony with our surroundings. But it's not just about survival. It's about pushing the boundaries of what we know, exploring the unknown, and reaching for the stars. It's about lighting the torch of curiosity and passing it on to the next generation. This dream of colonizing Mars, of turning it into a second Earth, is being pursued with relentless determination and unwavering optimism. It's being pursued by pioneering space agencies, by visionary entrepreneurs, and by ordinary people who dare to dream big. This dream is being pursued by both governmental and private entities. Having traversed the audacious concept of terraforming Mars, we've explored the potential role of greenhouse gases, the creation of an atmosphere, the introduction of water, and the biological approaches to making Mars habitable. We've identified the challenges and risks, and we've dreamed together of a time when space colonization becomes a reality. Mars, as a potential second Earth, is not just a dream, but a tangible goal. With ongoing research and exploration, we are inching closer to this reality. Every technological advancement, every scientific discovery, brings us one step closer to transforming this dream into reality. The journey is long and fraught with challenges, but as we continue to reach for the stars, the dream of a second Earth remains within our grasp. So let us keep dreaming, keep exploring, and who knows, one day we might just call Mars our second home.